Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today I'm going to show you a team that got me from ace to veteran rank in the Retro Cup, which consisted of a Jellicent lead and a double dragon backline, also known as an ABB team. If you don't know what an ABB team is, basically the lead is going to cover the weaknesses of the backline, and the backline is usually about the same typing or has the same weaknesses to a Pokemon. So Dragonair and Altaria are going to both be weak to Ice types, not Fairy types because Fairy types aren't allowed in the Retro Cup as well as Steel and Dark types. Dragonair is going to be the safe switch for this team because Altaria is four times weak to ice. And Dragonair isn't as bulky as Altaria, but the unique thing about Dragonair is it can actually be a Frostlass. So if they switch a Frostlass into your Dragonair, not only do you lure out the ice type, you can also potentially flip switch. And then our Altaria is just going to sweep the endgame. This is a team similar to Jonkus, who used a Lantern lead in a Kingdra safe switch, but I liked the um, Dragonair safe switch just because it can beat Frostlass. Kingdra probably can de defeat a Frostlass better, but I don't have a Kingdra. And um, I did have a Lantern, but I think Jellicent performed better as a lead in case I encountered any grass types or uh, Dragonair leads. So I'm showcasing all 25 battles because I needed all five sets to get to rank 22. I managed to go 21 wins and four losses. So I would definitely recommend this type of team for you if you wanted to play the Retro Cup just cause dragons are super good in this meta. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at these battles. So this player used a Medicham, and Medicham is definitely good in the Great League, but unfortunately in a meta where Steel-type and Dark-types are banned, Medicham has less use in this cup. It still counters the normal types, rock types, or ice types, especially Aurorus, since Aurorus was number two on PV Poke. But this team is very good against opposing Medicham. I put these battles at 1.5 speed just of course to speed things up. Because if these were times 1, this definitely would go by much slower. So next game we have Jelson and a Frostlass. It's a decent matchup but you definitely want to be careful of that Shadow Ball. So we're going to stay in because... We don't want to just reveal our dragons. They try catching a Shadow Ball, and I make a giant mistake here. I should switch into Altaria because, like I said, Altaria has a four times weakness to ice, and it can beat Noctowl. Dragonair, um, I'm about to learn, does not defeat a Noctowl. So now I'm going to go for Switch. I'm going to go a Shield Down, which is unfortunately... Not going to be the play here because we don't want our Jellicent to be aligned with the Knocked Owl. We do get the farm down, but this energy is not going to do anything. So the opponent's waiting at the clock for probably no reason. We go for the Aqua Tail. We wa really want to get a shield here, and we don't. At least we have a bunch of energy on the Jellicent. I probably should have gone for a Hex here because that would just give me a lot more value. So we shield the Shadow Ball, go for our Surf, and then we're just going to immediately throw this next Surf. And is my opponent going to shield it? Yes. Which is really bad. I should have attempted to catch a Shadow Ball here. It definitely would have been risky, but I thought I would be able to use Fast Move Pressure to win this game, and I don't. So there were many win conditions here, and I didn't take any of them and I just lost this game with a lot of human error but GG's to my opponent for predicting my back line and knowing to keep the frost last alive moving into the third game we got Jelson and the lantern definitely terrible we got dragon air as a safe switch which is an excellent answer to lantern and they switch into a vigoroth 
Jelsent beats Vigoroth due to the addition of Surf a few seasons ago, so it makes sense why they switch Vigoroth into Dragonair, but still not a Dragonair answer. So we throw the Body Slam number one. We get to Body Slam number two, which is big, because now we get to flip switch or get another shield. So I don't remember when the switch clock was up, so I'm just going to wait out my clock fully just to be safe. And we're going to go into Jellicent and farm up as much energy as we can, because Bulldoze is not a threatening move, so we do not need to shield it. We're going to farm up. A lot more energy just because even a second bulldoze won't KO and they actually don't make it to a second bulldoze I think they were one turn off from getting to the next one they switch back in the lantern and we're going to go for the shadow ball here because if they stay in a uh, moonblast will now knock out or I could farm this thing all the way down so I'm gonna shield here because a thunderbolt does about 45% damage but we're going to want to save one shield in case they have an ice type in the back, which will deal a lot more damage than a thunderbolt. Plus, if I didn't shield one of these thunderbolts, it could have potentially knocked out. And now that they have a trevenant in the back, this game is over. Next game, we lead Jelson into Dragalgy. It's a pretty neutral lead, just got to be careful of that outrage. We do outpace the Dragalgy. We do probably want to switch out at some time because um, we have two better answers to Dragalgy in the back. Jelson is okay. So they immediately shield the Shadow Ball, so they might be weak to it. So I'm going to shield this in case it's the potential Outrage. And they actually do Outrage, to my surprise. I decide to switch now to Bank the Energy. They get to another move. I thought this would be an Aqua Tail, but I thought it'd still shield. And I thought that was a mistake, but it was impressively another outrage. So they have a giraffe rig, and this thing hits incredibly hard. I thought I wouldn't get to this next body slam, but we do. And this is incredible because this thing would have just unloaded a bunch of damage onto my team. I tried to get the dragon breath snipe, but we do not get it, unfortunately. They do psychic fang, so my... Defense is going to be lowered by one stage. They have a lantern in the back. And this is pretty awkward because the Moonblast isn't going to KO. And because of the defense drop, a Thunderbolt may potentially KO. They switch for here for no reason. There was no reason to switch here. And this just gives me a win condition because I win CMP against Lantern. And the Shadow Ball is going to take out the Lantern. Maybe the opponent thought I just had more energy and uh, wasn't keeping track and just panicked and switched. And that's okay. I don't always manage my energy like I'm supposed to. But next game, we're leading into another Medicham. Definitely very good spot. They're actually staying in. So we're just going to go for the Shadow Ball. They throw in good timing. Uh, they're going to go for a Psychic because it's the only real move that deals damage they switch into a dugong and now i really wish i did shield that psychic because i still cannot switch so we shadow ball the dugong we're gonna get to another on the cmp tie do they shield it yes they do and i really want to keep my jellicent alive here so luckily i correctly shield a drill run and I switched into Dragonair because they're dry on energy, so they can't go for an Icy Wind. We're taking a lot of fast move pressure, and they actually still shield. And because I was expecting the opponent to let this go, because this is how the opponent gets use out of their Medicham. So I'm just going to sack my Dragonair. We're going to wait the clock out because unfortunately our switch clocks are misaligned. We send in Altaria, because if we sent in the Jellison, I'm pretty sure they would have made it to a move. And unfortunately, it's just the Medicham double ice backline, which double ice is going to counter our double dragon backline. We switch out because we don't want Altaria to see this wall rain. We gotta shield up an Icicle Spear, unfortunately. They do catch on Medicham, and what I tried doing here was going for an undercharge to get a good enough 
hex down, uh, it doesn't work. So now we're going to have to try to fast move down with Medicham and come out with enough energy to use a sky attack versus the wall rain. So we get the farm down on Medicham, but they actually had an Icicle Spear. I thought they were one more away, and I was pretty heartbroken by this loss, but that's just my fault for not managing their energy. All right, we're through with the first set, so on to the next set. So Medicham lead, so let's not mess this up this time. They immediately switch into a Dunspares, and we're going to switch into Dragonair because Medicham's best play against this team is going to be against the Dragonair. So if I lose switch here, the Medicham is still not going to have a lot of play. The Dunspare shields instead of trying to let it go to use Medicham. I was able to luckily get a CMP tie, but this Pokemon is pretty annoying to deal with, especially with the rollout buff. Because of the rollout buff, it's literally able to knock out my Dragonair before I make it to a body slam. So I go in Jellicent because I don't want to have to use shields with my Dragonair when it's using Rock Slide. And this is probably a mistake because this Surf is not going to knock out. I do win CMP over the Dunspares, so I can either go for the CMP, an aggressive farm down, or a catch. So we try going for a catch, and not only does it not work out, the Dunspares now gets to a move. I'm not going to shield this in case they have an ice type in the back, but unfortunately because we switch, the Dragon Breath through did not KO because it takes a turn to switch. So the opponent knows that Medicham has better play against the Altaria, and they know they can survive a sky attack, so they just let it through. They go for an ice punch, so I gotta start using my shields. Luckily, I'm able to farm it down before it gets to another ice punch, which is huge, but they have a lantern in the back. So we go for the Moonblast, because sky attack's not very effective, and they actually shield. The Shadow Ball does slightly more damage. We try to go for a sky attack, but we don't get it. I figured I would just let this go because I need to save a shield for the Jelson. Now our Jelson's getting pretty low, and unfortunately, this Shadow Ball is not going to take out this Lantern, but we get a full Hex through. And this is probably going to win us the game because now all we need is a Surf to knock out this Lantern, and that's going to be a good game. Next game, we have Jelson into a Dunsparce. You're going to see I misplay this because, once again, I'm running an ABB line, so I should be switching into Dragonair. And because this is a losing matchup for the Jellison. So we're going for the Surf, and it's going to do about 25%. We're not going to shield the first move on Dunsparce because none of the moves are very threatening. We're going to farm up some more energy. I farmed an extra in case they went for the CMP tie, but I ended up getting the CMP tie, which is probably better for me since I win CMP. So we let this next draw run go through. I switch into Dragonair, which I actually didn't mean to catch. I was going to try to knock out the Dunsparce, and they switch into a Frostlass. And unfortunately, I said Frostlass does not beat Dragonair, but unfortunately, at a health range like this, and since they shielded, they're going to go for a farm down, and I'm not going to get to another Aqua Tail. So this thing has so much energy. So I'm going to switch into Jellicent to use it as a damage sponge. I actually had a Surf, and it's perfect that they overtap because they wanted to go for optimal timing, but I'm going to get the next shield. So I'm, I'm going to let this go because we're going to get as much energy on Altaria as we can. Hopefully since we baited out the ice type, they don't have another ice type, right? So we got to shield the avalanche, otherwise we just simply get one hit KO'd, and we farm down the frost last. Now they have the Dunspares, and they switch it in. So I'm actually going to throw the energy. I was thinking about the farm down, but decide against it. So what's the last Pokemon they have in the back? It's a Jellicent. Suddenly this is looking winnable. The shield advantage is definitely important because of the Shadow Ball, or if 
they're running Ice Beam. But this is a Hex variant. It's usually the Bubble variant that runs Ice Beam. So they go for the move. I was deciding, do I call a bait? And luckily, I do not decide to almost throw this game. We're just going to go for the Sky Attack and win this game. Next game, we lead Jellicent into a Galarian Slowbro. Definitely a positive lead for us. So the opponent's going to switch into an Oranguru. We sit, switch into Dragonair. Which, unfortunately, I do not have an Oranguru answered. So we go for the Body Slam, and they don't shield it, because Oranguru is... I wouldn't say tanky, but it's not glassy like we are. So they go for a Psychic for a 10% chance at a Defense Drop, which is why they did not go for the Foul Play. So we're throwing the Foul Play, and they shield, and I was hoping we'd fast move down in time, but we don't. And this time they throw the foul play. I decided to keep switch. I probably do not need it because it's a Galarian Slowbro. But we do get this next move so it's going to be worth the shield. I threw on bad timing so I gave him a full poison jab through so I get less Dragon Breath damage off. And they throw in a Como O. Once again, um, a Dragon type I was not expecting. So... I thought I misplayed this, but it ended up being helpful that they no-shielded. If they shielded, I think my Altaria would have been in trouble. Luckily, Altaria is bulky, and we get the farm down. They send back in the Galarian Slowbro. We have a Sky Attack against the Galarian Slowbro. We were going to throw the Sky Attack for optimal timing, but they forfeit. Next game, we encounter a Cordelia on the lead, which is really bad because our lead and our Altaria are going to be weak to it. And to make matters worse, they have an Abomas Snow safe switch. Another core breaker. For some reason, they shield, but then you're going to find out later that they're going to use this to get rid of my Dragonair and get a shield or a knockout versus my Jellicent. They had two, so I could not shield there. Otherwise, I would just be wasting two shields, and they could just shield again and still take switch. So, I have to come into my gel ascent, otherwise Altaria would get destroyed. We shield up the incoming energy ball correctly. Thank god they did not bait. We go for the shadow ball after over farming a little more. I probably could have over farmed more. Thankfully, they let this go. I decided to stay in, um... Cordilly Sense has a unique typing. You can go Surf or Shadow Ball. They're both effective. They go for a Grass Knot. We're going to go for a Shadow Ball. And as annoying as it is, they shield. So I'm looking to catch a Grass Knot, and we correctly do catch it after throwing three Hexes. While it's a nice feeling to catch the Grass Knot, unfortunately the opponent has a Frost Last in the back, and this game is over. They had two Ice Types in the back to counter our Dragon Types, and a Cradilly as a lead that basically core broke the team. This Frost Last is going to throw an Avalanche, and it's going to actually have enough health to be able to get to a Shadow Ball versus the Jellicent. Yep, to make matters even worse, one, um, not 1 HP, but... A little sliver of health to knock out our Jellicent. But we weren't going to be able to get rid of the Cradilly anyway. So that's just going to be GG's. On the bright side, we lead Jellicent versus Medicham. And they switch in a Frost Slash. We're going to stay in this matchup because we had a head start on energy. Unfortunately, they're going to bait here with an Avalanche. Which was a very nice bait. I was depending on letting it go to see if I could survive a Shadow Ball, and it definitely would have paid off. Unfortunately, they even call a Surf as well. So now I gotta go two shields down versus this opponent. This time we shield the Shadow Ball. Man, it would have been annoying to get double baited. So hopefully they are weak, and of course they have a Dunsparce. We're going to chip at this Dunsparce with this Surf. They let it go. We're going to farm up some energy, and I don't know why I switched Dragonair, because now it just gives the Medicham play. And like I said, they just bring in the Medicham, so it was probably not a smart play. We go for the Body Slam. They decide to let it go, because this is the only place where Medicham's going to have play. We actually get to another Body Slam, so they're going for the Counter Down. 
And interesting enough, they don't shield. I was also expecting it to be a simultaneous knockout, but we actually do get rid of the Medicham. Not that it really mattered, because we didn't have a move on the Dragonair. So, we luckily have two Surfs against this Dunsparce. Dunsparce is getting pretty low. It's going to have to shield another Surf, or it may potentially KO. Um, by the way, this opponent throwing Rock Slide, that's the wrong move to go for. Draw Run does slightly more damage, but annoying enough, it's actually the correct move they should be going for, because if I were to switch into Altaria, I would have caught a Rock Slide and not a Draw Run. So, it was a CMP tie, so I couldn't switch out. I wasn't actually going to switch out, I was just showing it was a CMP tie. Now we're just going to Dragon Breath this thing down, but the opponent forfeits. Alright, set number 2, we go from 2378 to 2421. We are now 79 points away from hitting Veteran. Let's keep going. Next game, we lead a Jellicent into a Kofagrigus. This is a pretty bad lead because Kofagrigus has Shadow Claw, which is way better than Hex. It also can bait us with Dark Pulse and outpace us. What I probably should have done was eventually switch out. We're going to go for a Surf Bait. Because a Shadow Ball would knock out the Kofagrigus. So they're going to shield. And they throw an optimal timing. So I'm going to double shield. They throw another Dark Pulse. So we're going to throw one Hex for optimal timing. And we're going for another Surf Bait. They bait twice. We'll bait twice. And it ended up working. And we're going to be able to get to this Shadow Ball. It's going to take out this Kofagrigus. Doesn't matter that Shadow Claw went through because it's going to get the knockout. Now they send in a Dragonair. It's times like this where you forget to play an ABB line correctly and check if they have a counter to your back line. So we switch in Altaria instead of Dragonair because Altaria is bulkier than Dragonair. And um, I thought I misplayed this very badly and it was going to cost me the game. But luckily we just survived this body slam. I was trying to bank a Moonblast and luckily I did. And they have their own Altaria. So running a very very similar team except instead of Jellicent, they were running Kofagrigus, which is pretty weak to Ice type because at least Jellicent resists it. So they throw their energy here and this is our win condition. Now we just got to hope the Dragon Breath through does not knock us out, and it doesn't, which is kind of shocking because sometimes you'll get a bug where you aren't able to click your charge moves or, of course, it takes a turn to switch, so it just would have knocked us out. Next game, we face Altaria as a lead. I'm going to throw a Shadow Ball, whether it's to get a shield or some chip damage, but my opponent switched on a Lickitung. Dragonair beats Lickitung luckily because it deals um, better fast move pressure because Dragonair gets stab on Dragon Breath and Lickitung does not get stab. Things are going well. The opponent's just going to go for a body slam. I wanted to run a Lickitung, but unfortunately I didn't have the resources. And you're going to see here that a lag spike is going to cause me to have to give up a shield to lose switch. Because it did not register as a CMP tie. So now I go for a farm down instead. That lag spike was definitely annoying. And now they're just going to switch in the Altaria, tank this body slam like it's nothing. And we're not going to get to another body slam. I can't really send in the Jellicent, so I gotta rely on fast move pressure here. And I know shield this, and luckily it's just a sky attack. A moon blast or dragon pulse definitely would have dealt a lot more damage. They're gonna go for another sky attack here, so we're still able to keep our Altaria alive. And honestly, what I probably should have done was throw the sky attack, maybe fake the opponent to thinking it was a moon blast. But um, this game is over. Aurora's up two shields is just going to be able to defeat this Jealous Scent. All they need is one Meteor Beam to knock out the Jealous Scent. And then one Powder Snow is probably going to take out my Altaria. You may be thinking that my opponent misplayed here and the Surf might knock it out. But what my opponent is going to do is they're going to 
farm up energy to have a meteor beam because I think it's 60 or 65 energy and then just finish off the game with um, a powder snow. They, they make a catch which is actually better for me because I would not have been able to defeat the Altaria with fast move pressure but doesn't matter as the Aurorus takes us out. Next battle we lead uh, Jellison into a Vigoroth. Like we said, we do win this because Jellison has Surf, and all Vigoroth can go for is Bulldoze. And Bulldoze is a pretty bad move. 60 energy and only 80 power, it's not going to do anything to Jellicent. So we f throw the first Surf, we're farming up. If you want to know the optimal timing for a 1.5 turn move versus a 1 second move, you throw an odd number. So we're going to finally switch because we're playing an ABB line. We don't get to knock out the Vigoroth in time or catch a Bulldoze, but that's okay. Because we end up leading out a Dunsparce. We get the CMP tie, and I've actually made a bunch of CMP ties because I do not like rollouts animation. It's just awkward for me to time. Same thing with Fairy Wind. Dunsparce takes out my Dragonair. Now I have a decision which Pokemon to go into. I go into the Altaria because I didn't have any energy, I believe, on the Jellicent. So I'll just use a shield and take down the Dunsparce with my Altaria. We don't get the Dragon Breath knockout, so we're going to have to take a Rock Slide. Now we got to see what they have in the back. They sent in the Vigoroth, which was free farm, and now they send in Jealous Scent. I guess they were expecting us to immediately throw a charged move, but that wasn't going to happen. So the Jealous Scent immediately shields, which makes sense to preserve health. We go for the second Sky Attack, but they let this one go through, because if they didn't, then a Shadow Ball would have knocked out. Now I have a decision to make. Do I shield, or do I call a Surf? It actually is a Surf, but I don't think I can survive the Hex. And I actually did have energy, so I was wrong. I do have energy on my Jellicent, and I'm going to have enough energy to throw back-to-back -back Surfs and take out the opposing Jellicent. While we wait for this Jellicent to take out the opposing Jellicent, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more videos, make sure to subscribe which will help grow my channel. Next game, we lead Jelson into Dragonair. I'm going to farm up to a Shadow Ball, but bait with a Surf to potentially get a shield. Shadow Dragonair is much more glassy than the original Dragonair. And usually, Dragonairs do not run Dragon Pulse anymore because of the buff it got when Dragonair got Body Slam. So now that they used their energy, I'm going to switch in Altaria instead this game, just because it is bulkier. They didn't switch out, so they're down a shield and switch, and they send in a Vigoroth. And they must be very weak to Altaria. Their Dragonair may have been their best response. So we get the Sky Attack, and they immediately throw their Body Slam. And at this point, Altaria has done a lot of work. So if the opponent's weak to one dragon, maybe they're weak to two. So I'm going to shield this to preserve some health because Body Slam has 60 power and with Stab it's a pretty good move. And they have a Mew in the back. They throw out five and usually the standard moveset for Mew is Surf and Wild Charge. But this Mew is running Dragon Claw. Unfortunately for this Mew we have a bunch of energy all around our team. We throw body slam number one, we're throwing body slam number two, which they will shield, but we also have a surf on our Jellicent. So this is going to take out Mew, and this Vigoroth is not going to be able to take out this Jellicent and this Dragonair. It's too low on health and energy, and that's going to be a good game. Now, this is only Ace Rank, so that's probably why you're thinking I've gone 21 and 4, but you do encounter some very competitive battles that have about Legend Rank knowledge, even in uh, these types of ELL ranges. Take this player here who has um, 
the Leon pose, which you can only get if you hit rank 24. I've actually hit rank 24 the first season it came out, which I believe was season 6. And I also was um, on the season 1 leaderboard in Pokemon Go when 24 ranks weren't a thing. When it was just 10, it was actually in my channel description. But focusing on the battle, we have a defense Deoxys. It's going to use Psycho Boost to attack drop itself, but to knock out our Dragonair. And since their two attack stages drop, the Thunderbolt still does a decent amount of damage, but not as much as it would. And they have a Venusaur in the back. We go for the Shadow Ball, and they no shield it. So now we might be able to win this game with fast move pressure with our Altaria. We're going to shield everything on the Dunsparce because it'll do probably about the same damage as Sludge Bomb because Venusaur is also kind of attack weighted. Of course the Rock Slides are super effective but we're just going to double shield both moves on the Dunsparce. And at this point my opponent has swiped their game away because the... Um, Screen is slowed down and they're not switching even though they have one Pokemon. So this is just going to be a good game as we Dragon Breath down this Venusaur and move on to the next battle. After completing the next set, we go from 2421 to 2464. Starting the first battle of set 4, we have Jellison into a Dunsparce. This is where I started playing the Dunsparce lead differently. We would immediately switch into Dragonair and they came in Frostlass. This is where I said Frostlass can't actually beat Dragonair because now we have this energy lead. So they shield once, we throw on good timing luckily, and we get to this second Aqua Tail. They let it go. Now I have a decision to make. Do I take Switch or do I f get energy on my Jellicent? I decided to get energy on my Jellicent because I thought they would make it to another Avalanche. So we wait out the clock fully because our switch timer was not up. And unfortunately, if you were counting, because I was not, they had an avalanche. And here's a little trivia. If you go Dragonair versus Frostlass, it takes 12 Powder Snows in order for the Frostlass to reach two charge moves. I thought it took 11, but that is incorrect because... Powder Snow charges 8 energy, and 8 times 11 is 88. So they cannot have 2 Avalanches because Avalanche is 45 energy. Now looking back, I probably should have taken Switch because this Dunsparce is getting a lot of value on my Jellicent and my Altaria, and they have a Hypno in the back. We throw the Sky Attack. The goal now is to get this Jellicent versus the Hypno. And interesting enough, they actually shielded that. So instead, I go for another Sky Attack. And what this Hypno is about to do is it's going to Confusion me down. And I'm going to throw the Surf because if I do not throw the Surf, I lose this game. Because this Hypno, if it has Thunder Punch, it will just be able to get to both moves. So now uh, we're up against this Dunsparce. We charge uh, the same energy. No, actually Hex charges 12 and Rollout charges 13 energy. Um, this was weird that the Hex damage did not register. Um, that's just the move mechanic. But before we throw the Surf, the Hex KOs a normal type and we win that game. Next game leading into some spice, Jellicent versus Omastar. This Omastar is running Mudshot and what I predict is going to be Rock Slide. The opponent threw an alignment giving me a full hex and like I said they do have Rock Slide. I go for timing and unfortunately I let them get to another Rock Slide. Rock Slide is a legacy move on Omastar. I throw another hex even though I'm basically maxed on energy for optimal timing. I was thinking I should have surfed because I bet they were going to shield this, but they didn't. And once again, this time I should have baited, but I didn't because a Shadow Ball would take out a Trevenant. And now I just panic and I don't really have an answer to this Trevenant now. I have the Altaria, but once again, I forgot to check for a counter versus Dragon types. So we throw on good timing. And that's actually going to matter because they let this Aqua Tail go through 
and the Dragon Breath through KOs. But unfortunately, they have a Frost Last, so all they need to do is farm down this Dragonair and come out with energy to knock out the Jellicent and the Altaria. They shield in case I was running a potential nuke move, which is probably not the right play unless they were keeping track. I get no, it was the correct play because I don't have any energy. And now I need to win with fast move pressure. And we're so close. But unfortunately, like I said, uh, Frostlass farmed up enough energy to take out our Pokemon. And unfortunately, we get team swept by a Frostlass. Since there's no Dark type or Steel types, Frostlass is a pretty powerful Pokemon. But moving on from that game to this game, we lead a Jellison into a Defense Duoxus, which is a very good lead. Then they switch into a Duke's Gong. We can't switch out, so we gotta go for a Shadow Ball. And we're going to immediately throw it because we could get a Hex through, but since they switch, since it takes a turn, we deny them an Ice Shard through. They even went for an Icy Wind. So now I'm going to farm up Energy and switch into Dragonair to reset the debuff and bank the Energy and farm down this Dugong. And we actually do get the farm down, so it can't get to a charge move. So we bait out the next ice type, and now we go for a body slam with our Dragonair. Everything's going right in this game. It looks like we might be a defense duoxis double ice line with our double dragon line. So they send in the Dragonair, and it looks like they're going to get the counter down. But we get the move mechanic because they switched. And this is getting even better. So now it's low, and we're going to send in Altaria because it's not going to have play against the wall rain. Defense Deoxys goes for a Thunderbolt. We're just going to let that through and go for the farm down. We're going to let this move go through again because an Icicle Spear would deal more damage. And what we're going to do is Sky Attack, and then we're just going to switch into the Jellicent. The wall rain's here. Keep in mind the opponent still has a shield. They let that move go through. We're going to stick in here and just go for some fast move pressure. I didn't know I had this much energy on Jellicent, but since they can't stack three charge moves, we're just going to go for the Hex down and take the win. Next game, we lead Jellicent into a Chestnut. Two better responses on the back, so we're going to immediately switch out. We switch into Dragonair, and they switch into a Frostlass. You know what that means. We might be able to flip switch with a Dragon type versus an Ice type. We land the Aqua Tail. They go for a move. And we're going to shield this up to take switch to realign our Pokemon. Frostlass gets knocked out. An opponent is waiting and sends in a Jellicent. Unfortunately, our switch clock is not up, so we're going to have to just dump our energy. And to make matters worse, I throw on bad timing, giving them a full hex for free. This time, I do optimize my timing and get the maximum amount of Dragon Breath I can for them throwing one hex. We don't get to a third Aqua Tail, which actually would have probably been nice. And at this point, I'm going to sack my Jellicent because a two shield Altaria is going to be very good. I was going to stay in to see if they threw even more energy. The opponent's going to throw a Frenzy Plant here and find out it does no damage. And they're going to forfeit because two shields, unfortunately, is not going to do anything for them. And that's going to be a good game. Next game, we lead Jelson into a Ranguru. Bad lead due to its part normal type. They stay in for two confusions and are a little slow in the safe switch. And that might pay off because they have a Frost Last and we've loaded a bunch of Dragon Breaths. They immediately shield, but it turns out that confusion damage is going to matter because this opponent is going to double shield and go for an aggressive Powder Snow down. Can we get to the Aqua Tail? We just cannot. So we're going to send in the Jellicent and most likely have to use one shield. But that's okay because we got two shields versus this. Here I decide to let the Shadow Ball go through because I would put my trust into the Altaria because they're still in a Rangaroo. 
You just gotta hope there's not another ice type in the back. So we get a little bit of a Dragon Breath head start, and they switch back in the Oranguru. So maybe we actually have a chance at winning this game. We shield up the foul play because we want to preserve health. We don't want to get too low in case they have a surprise in the back. So we're throwing the sky attack and we're going to farm down for some energy to threaten the next Pokemon. And it's a Lantern. We're going to go for the Moonblast because sky attack is resisted. And if we're lucky, we get a 10% Moonblast attack drop. We do not get it. And this opponent is going to farm up. And that we have to make a call. Do we shield a Surf or a Thunderbolt? I shield and unfortunately shielded the Surf. I should have called the bait knowing that they farmed up to 100 energy. But that's just a call. And that was a good play by my opponents. And that wins them the game. And fun fact, that's actually one of the battles that prevents us from getting to Veteran. As you see our ELO is 24.77. Alright, this is the last set to attempt to get to Veteran. We lead off with another Oranguru, and this Oranguru is staying in. So we throw the Body Slam on optimal timing. They let it go. We get a Dragon Breath through. They're going to throw a Foul Play. I decide to shield it to try to attempt to take back Switch. They're staying in with the Oranguru. We're going to throw a Body Slam on perfect timing. Now we're going to see, is the opponent going to shield? Yes, they are. And now, I'm actually going to let this go and try to get an energy lead with my Jellicent. I'm going to take advantage of Oranguru's typing and try to get some energy to threaten what might come in to get back a shield or to knock out a Pokemon. Let's see what they send in. They send in another normal type, and it's done sparse. We throw a Surf to Chip. Unfortunately, you... We don't get the deny. Sometimes when they switch in a Pokemon, you could get the potential deny where they do not get a fast move. It's kind of a bug right now that's not being fixed. And they immediately threw the drill run. So I was thinking, what if I make a catch? And we do. This is why you pay attention to your opponent's playstyle. Because if you're too predictable, it might actually give you a lose con. Catching a draw run is huge, but we're still not going to be able to Dragon Breath down. Am I going to shield this Rock Slide? I do not. And there was a Jellicent. So, maybe shielding the Rock Slide would have been better, but then we would have just taken a Shadow Ball. So I think saving the shield is better because it now develops mind games. Now we need to see if they Shadow Ball or Surf. They do go for the Shadow Ball to ensure the knockout. And unfortunately, I think I may have threw this game because my Jellicent is in the red health and their Jellicent is in the yellow health. And I do not think a Surf is going to take out the opposing Jellicent. But they let it go and two hexes KOs. Now all that's left is that done spares. We get to the Surf. Surf number one gets the shield and on the CMP tie. Surf number two is going to knock out this Dunsparce, and we're going to win this game. Another game, another Dunsparce. Since we're about to achieve veteran rank, we're encountering some veteran players, and this veteran leads off with a Dunsparce. We're going to immediately switch into Dragonair, and they bring in that Frostlass. We're going to try to see if we can flip switch or gain a shield advantage. This frost last lets the aqua tail go. They finally throw an avalanche and we're going to shield because I was counting their powder snows and they're not going to be able to reach another avalanche. They're going to be one fast move short. So they send in the dun spares. We throw on optimal timing. You'll love to see it. Dun spares takes the move. We're going to try to get to another body slam. I wasn't going to worry about timing because I wanted to see if I could get to this body slam, and we did get to it. Now we can just let this dragon there go. It defeated the frost last, and it got this Dunsparce to a manageable health range. Now can we farm down this Dunsparce? Unfortunately, no. And you know what? We're going to shield this because they had a frost last safe switch and a Dunsparce lead, and it turns out that shield was correct. 
Our Altaria is now lined up against the Jellison. They shield to protect some HP. Otherwise, I could potentially win with fast move pressure. We go for the second Sky Attack, and they double shielded. Now I'm looking for a good opportunity to switch in my Jellicent to defeat the opposing Jellicent. They go for the Shadow Ball. I try to get to the next Sky Attack. I think this is a misplay. I either should have committed to the Sky Attack or just have gone for the Shadow Ball. I actually go for the Surf because I felt like it would be enough to take it out. And they ended up catching it on a Dunsparce. I was fine with that because it's a manageable health range. Luckily, we are able to win this game based off of a CMP tie. I am running a pretty high attack stat, Jellicent. That's going to be a good game. Next game, Jellicent into Lantern. We're going to switch into our Dragonair. And they stay in and throw a Surf. Like I said, Dragonair is a great wall to a Lantern, so we'll comfortably no-shield this move, and they bring in a Kingdra. At this point, I was predicting that it was Jonkus' team. They had the Lantern lead and the Kingdra safe switch. They shield, and we do not get to a body slam. And we're going to come in with Altaria because the health range is too uncomfortable for Jellicent. Kingdra is going to reach a move, and we're going to shield it, whether it's an Octazooka or an Outrage. Luckily it was an Outrage, so we don't get a 50% harsh attack drop from the Octozooka. Opponent brings in the Lantern instead of keeping it aligned with the Jellison. What could that third Pokemon be in the back? Does that mean they might have a good answer to Jellison in the back better than Lantern? They shielded a Moonblast, so they might just be weak to Altaria in the back. I immediately no-shield this Thunderbolt, expecting it not to KO. It's a simultaneous switch, and it's a Tackle Greedon. At least it's not Bullet Seed. So we win CMP, and we get the Surf. But I wasn't sure what the right decision was after this. Do I shield a Crunch right now, or not, in case I get Defense dropped? And in this case, which I do, and try to shield the next Crunch but risk getting baited with the body slam. We reach to surf number two, and we're gonna try to get to surf number three, but they throw on optimal timing. Great counting by my opponent. The crunch luckily does not KO, and we're gonna over farm some energy. We throw the third surf, and they did not make a catch. However, this is not going to KO, and it was so low. We try sniping the greedent with an Altaria, but it's another simultaneous switch. Lantern throws a Surf, and now we need to get rid of this Lantern immediately. Lantern goes down, and Jellicent hexes down a Greedent. And I, like I said, I thought they had a Body Slam, but I guess they didn't throw it, or they did not have it. It may have been possible they forgot their Greedent was alive, or they got that bug where they can't do anything. But leading into the next game, we encounter a Haunter. And you're going to see my lack of knowledge is really going to ruin this game. I forgot Haunter got Ice Punch, and I was expecting him to go for a Shadow Punch. And now we don't get an Aqua Tail. On the bright side, this sets up a good farm down range, and we get a full Hex through versus the Haunter. I was debating on not shielding it, but let's be real. Haunter does a lot of damage. Now our opponent here takes advantage of our misaligned switch clocks, and they send in a lantern. To make matters worse, they shielded the next shadow ball. You see me try to switch there, and I was not able to. Maybe if I didn't throw the extra hex, I wouldn't get locked into my fast move. I decided I would just throw another shadow ball for optimal timing and some chip damage and dip. And now, it's up to Altaria. We haven't seen their third Pokemon yet, as this Lantern throws a Thunderbolt. Altaria farming up energy and getting that Lantern low. I thought this Lantern had reached another Thunderbolt, but it only happens to be a Surf, which is much better for us. So we're able to fast move it down, and they would not have made it. And they have a Medicham in the back. I know the opponent's only win con is to catch a Sky attack, and we're not going to let that happen. Medicham lets the first charge move go through. I was debating on going for just fast move pressure, but we just settle for the next sky attack. 
and we switch into the gel ascent to get to the surf the opponent was farming up energy which is nice recognition by them to overcome the pokemon we had but unfortunately over farm too much ended up losing a cmp tie and we finished off the medicham with the surf that game almost ended in the opponent's favor but moving into the next game we encounter a diggersby it's a simultaneous switch dragonair into a mew i switched out because while we have surf we don't really have any fast move pressure and if the diggersby has mud shot it would have better fast move pressure as well as earthquake as a good move we decided a no shield against a Mew, which is definitely risky because Mew learns almost anything and it happens to be an overheat and we survive. They bring back in the Diggersby and reveal its quick attack. We're going to switch into Altaria just because it, Altaria has a fantastic matchup against the Diggersby. Opponent letting their Diggersby get extremely low and then switching into a Frostlass. Now it's Jellicent versus Frostlass. Keep in mind, while this opponent is going to throw the Shadow Ball, be careful because some opponents may end up baiting twice and that can get them the win. Both of us are now down a shield. So luckily we do not try to call any baits, otherwise we would have lost this game. Opponent shields a Surf. I should have built up to the Shadow Ball. But our opponent needs to double shield here to have this Frost Last align against the Altaria. Luckily, we have one more shield versus this Frost Lass. They bait it with an Avalanche, but we now have the Surf against the Frost Lass needed to take it out. And all that's left is that Digger's B, but this opponent knows it's game over and they forfeit. And just like that, we went 5-5 five and five in the last set and went to Veteran with 25-50 ELO. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.